टी एस एलियट वॉज ए रिनॉन पोएट प्ले राइट एंड द लिटरी क्रिटिक हु सिग्निफिकेंटली इन्फ्लुएंस मॉडर्नस लिटरेचर इन दी ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी ही वॉज बॉर्न ऑट सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी सिक्स एटीन एटी एट इन द सेंट लुईस एंड लेटर बिकेम ए ब्रिटिश सिटीजन एलियट्स बॉडी ऑफ वर्क एंड कंपास इज पोट्री ड्रामा एंड क्रिटिकल एसेज ऑल ऑफ विच रेवोल्यूशनाइज द लिटरी लैंडस्केप एंड कंटिन्यू टू रेजोनेट विद लीडर्स टूडे एलियट्स पोट्री explore profound themes such as disillusionment spiritual crisis and the complexities of modern life his most notable poem includes the love song of j alfred prufrock which captures the inumina and detachment from of the modern individual the wasteland a fragmented and multilayered reflection on a post world war 1 society in decay and four quets a deeply philosophical and spiritual introspective exploration of time memory and human existence beyond his his poetic achievements eliot made significant contributions to literary criticism his critical essays including tradition and the individual talent and the sec- and the sacred word reshaped the understanding of tradition the role of poet and the interpretation of literature Eliot's ideas on the traditional emphasize the ongoing transformative nature of literary heritage while his concept of impersonal theory of poetry advocated for a more objective and universal expression of human experiences Tradition and the Individual Talent is a seminal essay written by T S Eliot in 1919 In this essay Eliot presents his thoughts on the nature of tradition the role of the poet and the relationship between tradition and the individual creativity it has become one of the most influential and widely discussed essays in literary criticism eliot begins the essay by challenging the conventional understanding of tradition as something rigid and static he argues that tradition is not simply the repetition of past achievements but rather a living and evolving force according to eliot tradition should be seen as a continuous and dynamic dynamic process where the past is constantly represented and reshaped by each new generation of artist eliot emphasizes the importance of poets relationship with the past and the tradition they inherit he condemns that the poet's work should be seen as a part of a larger literary tradition and the poet should be aware of their predecessors work the poet's creativity therefore is not a solitary act but a dialogue with the past eliot's assert that the poet should have a deep understanding of the literary heritage and engage with it critically and creatively one of the key ideas in the essay is the concept of historical sense eliot argues that the poet should possess a, possesses a historical sense which revolves a keen awareness of the past and an ability to see it in relation to the present this historical sense enables the poet to bring a fresh perspective to the tradition transforming and revitalizing it through their own unique vision eliot also introduces introduces the notion of the dissociation of sensibility referring to the separation of thought and feeling in modern poetry he suggests that the fragmentation and disillusionment of the modern world have led to a disconnection between intellect and emotion in poetry according to eliot the poet should strive to overcome this dissociation of sensibility and find a way to integrate both aspects in their work furthermore Eliot discusses the concept of objective correlative which refers to the use of external objects or events to convey and evoke specific emotions in poetry. He argues that the poet should find concrete and tangible images that can effectively communicate the intended emotions to the reader, avoiding vague and abstract language. In conclusion, tradition and the individual talent offers a thought-provoking analysis of the relationship between tradition and individual creativity. Eliot emphasizes the dynamic and transformative natures of tradition, encouraging poets to engage with the past while bringing their own unique vision to their work. The essay has had a profound impact on literary criticism, shaping the understanding of tradition and influencing subsequent generations of poets and scholars. T. S. Eliot's impersonal theory of poetry and his contributions to criticism. T. S. Eliot's impersonal theory of poetry is a significant aspect of his literary and critical philosophy. In his essay Tradition and the Individual Talent, the and other writings 
Eliot proposed the idea that poets should aim for impersonality in their work. Their theory, this theory suggests that the poet should strive to separate their personal emotions and experiences from their artistic creation, allowing the poem to exist as an independent and objective work of art. According to Eliot, the poet's primary task is to transcend their individual ego and become a medium through, within, through which the universal and timeless aspects of human experience can be expressed. By distancing themselves from their personal emotions, the poet can tap into the collective consciousness and draw from the shared culture and literary tradition. This approach enables the poet to create works that resonate uh, with a broader audience and possesses a lasting artistic value. Eliot believed that the personal emotion and experiences of the poet are subjective and transitory, while the poetic tradition and the collective wisdom of the past are more enduring and meaningful. By subjugating their personal feelings to the demands and the poem of the broader tradition, the poet can achieve a deeper insight into human conditions and produce work of universal significance. Eliot's impersonal theory of poetry had a profound impact on literary criticism and the understanding of poetic creation. It challenged the romantic notion of the poet as a passionate and self-expressive individual and emphasized the importance of tradition, craftsmanship, and the objectivity in the art of poetry. Eliot's contribution to criticism extends beyond his impersonal theory of poetry. As a critic, he played a crucial role in shaping the modernist movement and redefining the literary canon. His critical essays include The Sacred Wood and The Use of Poetry and the Use of Criticism provided insightful analysis of his contemporaries' works while also outlining his own poetic theories. Eliot's criticism focused on the need for tradition and the exploration of culture and literary sources. He drew attention to the importance of form, structure, and the language in poetry, advocating for a disciplined and rigorous approach to writing. His emphasis on the objective and impersonal qualities of poetry influenced subsequent generations of poets and critics, helping to reshape the understanding of poetic expressions and the literary aesthetics. In conclusion, T.S. Eliot's impersonal theory of poetry challenged the notions of the poet's subjective self-expressions and emphasized the role of tradition and objectivity in poetic creations. His contribution to criticism went beyond his theory, as he offered insightful analysis of literary works and helped shape the modernist movement. Eliot's ideas continue to be influential in the field of literary criticism and have left a lasting impact on the understanding of poetry and its relationship to tradition and the individual talent. Eliot's impact on the literary work cannot be overstated. His innovative ideas, dedication to tradition, and exploration to the, of the human conditions have shaped the modernist movement and redefined the literary canon. His work conti continues to inspire and challenge readers, ensuring his enduring legacy as one of the most influential figures in the 20th century literature and criticism. Matthew Arnold was an eminent English poet, cultural critic, and educator who played a significant role in Victorian literature. He was born on December 24, 1822 in Lehelm, Middlesex, England, and came from a family of prominent intellectuals. Unland works reflect his deep engagement with the social, moral, and intellectual issues of his time. His early life was marked by a strong academic background. He attended rugby school and Balliol College, Oxford, where he excelled in classical studies and literature. This classical education heavily influenced his writing and his beliefs in the importance of literature and education of betterment of society. One of the one of his most notable works in his collections of the poem titled The Scholar Gypsy and the Other Poems. In this collection, he explored themes of nature, spirituality, and the conflict between the demands of modern life and the longing for something more profound and transcendent. Arnold's poetry is characterized by its lyricism, reflective tone, and thoughtful introspections. However, his greatest impact came from his critical analysis, uh, critical essays, and culture contemporary. His essay collection, 
Culture and Anarchy remains one of his most influential works in this series of essays. Ernest examines the role of culture in society, arguing, arguing for the cultivation of intellectual and more ref, ref, refinement as a means of achieving social harmony and progress. He criticized the prevailing materialism and advocated for the pursuit of higher ideals for the education and arts. His culture criticism focused on the tension between the Palestinians who represents narrow mindedness and materialism and the anolism who companions in intellectual and artistic pursuits he sought to bridge the gap between these two groups and believed that culture understood uh, as the pursuit of perfection and harmonious development of human facilities could lead to a better society aside from his essay his critical essay his he also served as an inspector of schools and an advocate for educational reform he believed in the importance of liberal education and combined literary and scientific knowledge as well as moral and social development his views on education greatly influenced educational policies in england particularly in regards to curriculum and teaching training and teacher training matthew arnold work and ideas had a lasting impact on Victor victorian society and beyond his emphasis on the value of culture his call for intellectual and moral improvement and his insight into the challenges of modern continue to resonate the discussions of literature education and culture criticism elnard's legacy is a as a poet critic and advocate for a more enlightened society and solidifies his place as a significant figure in in 19th century literature and intellectual thought Matthew Arnold's essay The Function of Criticism at the Present Time is a seminal work of literary criticism that explores the lo- role of the critic in society and the value of literary and val- value of literary criticism during his time in this essay he examines the function of criticism as a means of elevating and refining public taste promoting cultural development and preserving the best of human achievements he begins by highlighting the prevailing notions of criticism as merely a subjective judgment of work of art he argues that criticism should be seen as something more significant and profound a means of assessing the true worth and value of literary work based on objective standards according to arnold the true function of criticism is to see the objective as in itself it really is and to bring the best that is known and thought in the world to bear upon it one of the key ideas in arnold's essay is his call for disinterestedness in criticism he believes that critics should approach their task and objectivity impartiality and dedication to seeking the truth they should be guided by a sense of fairness and com- commitment to understanding the works in its own terms rather than imposing personal biases or pre-convinced notion he emphasizes the importance of culture and the role of critic in preserving and promoting cultural values he argues that criticism should act as touchstones guiding the public t- uh, towards the best literary works and helping them develop refined taste by disseminating knowledge and fostering an approach for the finest expressions of human thought and creativity critics can contribute to the intellectual and moral progress of society furthermore he critiques the prevalent culture of his time which he sees a dominant by a pursuit of materialism and immediate pleasure he argues that criticism can con- contract this by encouraging the pursuit of higher ideals such as truth beauty and intellectual refinement critics have the responsibility to educate the public and elevate their understanding straying them away from mediocrity and towards the best that has been thought and said he also acknowledges the challenging faced challenges challenges faced by the critics in this in his era particularly the overwhelming volume of literary production and the influence of popular taste he encourages critics to maintain their independence and not by sway their popular opinion on the pressure of the market they should resist the temptations of sensible sense 
sensationalism and mediocrity and instead focus on promoting enduring works that contribute to the enrichment of society Matthew Arnold's poem A Criticism of Life is a respective and philosophical work that explores the complexities of human existence and the challenges of finding meanings and fulfillment in rapidly changing world and this poem he grapples with the tensions between the ideal and the real the pursuit of beauty and the realities of life and the role of poetry in, in illuminating the human conditions the poem begins with an acknowledgement of the disillusionment and dissatisfaction that permeates the modern world ernels laments the loss of the joy and freshness of the morning and the prevailing sense of weariness and emptiness he criticizes the materialistic and shallow pursuits of society which prioritize wealth power and pleasure over deeper spiritual and intellectual values he suggests that the poetry can serve as a source of solace and enlightenment in the face of these challenging challenges he views poetry as a means of transcending the limitations of the mundane and connecting with higher truth and ideals through the power of language and imagination poetry can offer glimpses of beauty truth and spiritual insight that are often obscured in the everyday world The poem further explores the tension between the ideal and the real. Arnold recognizes the allure of the ideal with its promises of perfection, harmony, and a higher sense of purpose. However, he also acknowledges the harsh realities of imperfections of life. He asserts that poetry should not shy away from these realities, but rather confront the them honestly and deeply. it should engage with the complexities and contradictions of human existence while still seeking to elevate and inspire arnold highlights the transformative potential of poetry suggesting that it can awaken the dormant facilities of the soul and provide moments of profound insight and clarity through its ability to capture and express the depth of human emotions and experience poetry can evoke a sense of catharsis and spiritual awakening at the same time he recognizes the limitations of poetry in fully addressing the complexities of life he acknowledges that poetry alone cannot provide all the answers or offer comprehensive understanding of existence it is but a criticism of life a subjective and imperfect lens through which to explore and interpret the human conditions In conclusion his poem a criticism to of life delves into the challenges of finding meanings and fulfillment in a world that often seems devoid of joy and purpose he presents poetry as a powerful tool for engaging with these challenges offers challenges offering a glimpse of beauty truth and spiritual insight matthew arnold known both as a poet and a critic made significant contribution to the field of literary criticism during the victorian era his approach to criticism was marked by his emphasis on the importance of culture the pursuits of perfection and the role of literature in society one of the earliest central ideas as a critic was the concept of culture he believed that culture represented the best that has been thought and said in the world encompassing literature art philosophy and other intellectual pursuits he saw culture as a means of attaining a higher level of human development and believed that literature played a crucial role in cultivating and disseminating culture he believed that the primary function of criticism was to assess and elevate works of literature based on their merits with an emphasis on the mo- on their moral and intellectual significance he advocated for a disinterestedness and impartial approach to criticism where the critic would evaluate more uh, works objectively free from personal biases or preferences uh, he believed that criti- criticism should strive for fairness and objectivity focusing on the qualities of the work rather than the individual behind it he also emphasized the importance of the pursuers per- of perfection in literature he believed that literature should strive to achieve a balance between sweetness and light combining aesthetic beauty with intellectual and moral enlightenment he valued work that demonstrated a high standard of craftsmanship and expressed universal human truths he criticized work with he deemed lacking in these qualities considering them as contributing to the deadline of culture 
Another aspect of Alner's criticism was his emphasis on the social and ethical role of literature. He believed that literature should serve as a moral guidance and a source of inspiration for society. He saw literature as a means of fostering understanding, empathy, and a sense of common humanity. He believed that the best literature could transcend boundaries and unite people by addressing universal themes and experiences. Arnold's critical works, including The Function of Criticism and The Present Time and Culture and Anarchy, had a significant effect on the development of literary criticism. His ideas influenced subsequent generations of critics and helped shape the understanding of the role of literature in society. His approach to criticism, with its emphasis on culture, the pursuits of perfection, and the social values of literature remains influ influential and in the fields of literary studies.